Today I'm delighted and honored to have with me Mr. Mustafa Shahat, who's an entrepreneur, advisor, mentor, who helps businesses raise funds and generate leads. So Mustafa, I really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast. Why don't we start with a small brief introduction on who you are, what you do, and how do you help the startup community? Thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, uh, my name is Musafa. You can call me Mo, based out of Cairo, Egypt. Um, I do work with uh, a lot of VCs and angel investors. My story started when I was running entrepreneurship programs in um, um, in the in Cairo, Egypt, and then working with the U.S. Embassy in Cairo. And then I was covering North Africa region as well as in Europe, working with Incubator, Accelerator. I was doing entrepreneurship broadcasting, publications, even my studies were relevant to entrepreneurship. And then I started working with a lot of VCs and angel investors. I was helping businesses to fundraise. So every month I meet around 200 in startups and I'm kind of trying to try to make more introductions to more uh, investors in my network and outside of my network as well. So, um, so yeah, I work with VCs from California all the way to Singapore. So. Uh, not on a full-time basis, so uh, it's more of like a scout, associate, like you can call it, whatever. Um, but again, I'm associated to different names and um, I'm always looking for good businesses to recommend. So. so tell me, is there anything specific, like uh, any spe- specific sector that kind of excites you? And how do you go about raising you know, funds for these startups? What's the process? For example, if I'm a startup, I, uh, if I come to you, how does the process work? See, I'm industry agnostic and region agnostic, but I do have a preference when it comes to some industries. Um preferences are fintech deep tech cpg uh that doesn't mean if a startup outside of those three industries cannot come to me they still can come to me because i can still can make introductions come them out but my preferences again are into the three different industries uh usually when when i talk to the startups like i do i do like a quick 10 to 15 calls with it just ask a question about like what is your story behind the, the business like how much yeah how, how much you're looking for how much you need to secure Who's leading you around? Are you generating revenue or not? And try to think it within my network who I can connect with to make a proper introduction. Um, and then right after the call, I just go ahead and, and do these introductions for the businesses completely free. I'm not acting as a broker. I'm not acting as a middleman. I'm a part of these connections. And I would love to kind of help and, and make those introductions. Moving forward, when the startups like feel like, okay, it seems like these introductions were helpful, but we still need more, then they want to engage in me asking him himself, I would love to have you with us, like manage the investment relations, whatever. And then I come in and I start approaching on behalf of the business, more investors outside of my own network. And um, for that particular uh, type of relationship, this is going to be more of a commission. Thing. So I asked for a commission offer. Are you saying that, you know, that there's no upfront fees that you take from the startups, no. but then you, you kind no of help, yeah, you, you can help them grow if they kind of so so, so 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 talk to me a little bit about the startups. You know, what are the boxes that needs to be ticked in a startup when you say that okay, this is the startup I'm gonna go and support and you know help them you know raise funds you know meet open up your contacts with the investor community that you have. Makes sense. Yeah, it's a it's a very good question. Thank you for sharing that. Um, two two things I'm looking at. One is when I'm communicating with any startups, I need to know, um, of course, like, does, did, the, did the entrepreneur or the founder of those startups started a, a business in the past or not? Um, have they fundraised in the past or not? Um, are they coming from an entrepreneur background or not? I mean, it's, I, I need to have, um, there should be some qualifications for successful entrepreneurs, right? Um, I need to look at the quality of the business as well. Is it technology and innovation driven? Yes or no. Um, it's a very, if it's a traditional business, very normal, very traditional, something that like, I mean, if no one will be interested in investing, then there's no point then to waste the time and investing in something that no one will care about. I'm looking for something that is that has a potential, a growing market, uh, innovation, technology driven. The entrepreneur, the founder is, is like, does have a, a high quality of, of skill sets as well as experiences so that I can, when I'm, I'm presenting them, it, I can grab attention quick. Uh, this is exactly, this is uh, exactly what I'm looking for. So what's the ticket size? You know, what's the ticket size that you can raise at this point in time or, or you have raised so far? Think- Besides the ticket size, I mean, do you also, you know, help these startups who are, you know, at, at the idea stage at this point in time? Yeah, it's a, ticket size is usually between 150 all the way to up to 2 million. Sometimes it goes up to 5 million. That's kind of the, 
the range and the maximum that I have ever worked in. It, it really depends. Some, I came across some every month, like those who just have an idea and they're looking for lead investors. It's, it's a little bit tricky, very challenging. And um, probably even you do, you, you found someone, it's, gonna, it's not going to be in a VC, of course, it's going to be more of an angel investor. You found someone who can put like 25 up to 50K just to push the idea a little bit forward. It's not going to be me, to be honest. Um, it, it takes a lot of time, energy, um, and it's, it's very early. You can't even decide whether it's going to be a winning or not. So you have to do a lot of investments. You have to do a lot of um, reach out, put more money and time into it. So um, I, I prefer, to be honest, to work with at least someone with uh, some attraction, some users, some clients, whatever. Uh, product market fit is there. Um, they're making a little bit of revenue. Not much. Could be a little bit. But something is there, you know, and then we can grow it. Right. Uh, uh, could you name some of the startups that you have helped in, uh, you know, raising their funds and growing? Event Kombu, uh, based out of New Jersey, uh, Series A, Event Ticketing Company. And then the other company, it's a Fluid Meet, and I'm also part of it. And it's a Series A as well, uh, 2 million. Um, and um, yeah, so um, this is kind of the two names that I can share in public. So, right. So, how, how is the the globe, the downturn, the economic downturn, impacting the investment community? Because uh, it seems the investment has gone a little slow. And, and just recently, there was news the SoftBank has lost around twenty six billion dollars. How is that impacting the investment com- uh, 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 community? When you feel uh, when you feel not confident about the economy situation, usually you're not going to put any cash into into startups. You're going to keep the cash with you, right? Um, and what will happen eventually is that I mean the it's a the number of startups that are looking for cash will increase, and then and then you uh, you know like it's going to be a little bit challenging to find. Um, to find an investor, if you right, if you fundraising, then you will be very challenging to find an investor who can give you cash. Unless it's a uh, financial institutions, um, there could be a possibility at that point that you can uh, get some good check out of it. But angel investors, uh, small VCs, early stage, probably the um, within that kind of a time where economic situations are not stable, so probably you're going to find a hard time getting cash into your business. Um, and I think it's, um, I hope we're not in that situation. And uh, so far, I feel like it's um, a lot of angel investors um, are joining different investment syndicates looking for deals to invest in. VCs, a lot of VCs early stages started to grow in different regions looking for good business opportunities to invest in. So I feel like it's the, 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 the good vibes are there. So I, I would definitely support that. But then, you know, the, the other side is that, you know, what I've been seeing is that, you know, even in this economic downturn, Web3 is seeing huge investments in support. So this year, more than around 3.8 billion, uh, it seems, has been poured into startups in the Web3 space. So what are your views on this, you know, this full hype around blockchain, Web3 and the metaverse? Uh, do you think there's investments going to flow in that uh, sector or... Uh, yeah, I see. I see a huge potential in that. I mean, it's a new technology. It's 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 very booming, and I can tell from the perspective of the CPG industry, a lot of brands, direct to consumer brands, are converting from a web two, the traditional web that we're using, into the web three, which does have a lot of other interesting technology and features and whatever. Um, and um, so it is coming. It is booming. It, it's going to take its time. It's 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 um, it's growing right now. Um, I met a lot of investors who came over to me and asked me specifically for Web3 deals. They want to become part of it. They can put check, checks up to 50K. Um, and I can't, I can't really judge you the technology side of it. Like it's, I'm not a developer or I'm not into the, in the back end of stuff, but I can tell from a business perspective that it's a lot going on, specifically from an investment background as well as investors network um, um, they're all looking for 
um, a new areas and a niche industry to invest and look at. Right. Yeah, I think that the transition of Web two to Web three o is gonna open up humongous opportunities, and I guess that uh, it's a very very exciting space. Uh, tell me, uh, is are you open at kind of supporting or you know helping startups from India and these emerging economies raise funds? Yeah, I met a lot of startups, not only only startups, but I met a lot of investors and VCs from India. They're looking for good business opportunities. India is a very interesting market. Uh, the uh, population of, of the country gives it more um, uh, economic power for startups to grow quick. They will, they will always uh, find a client and users. Um, a lot of investments coming from abroad to inside India just to support businesses. And I've, 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 I've talked with a lot of Indian investors, uh, wealthy individuals looking for invest, uh, investments opportunities within the Indian ecosystem. Um, I lived in India myself. I lived in Gujarat and Ahmedabad once before the COVID. Um, and I can, I can tell you that it's a, the, the IT sector in India is booming and it's growing and everyone in, is, in India is a developer. They, I've, I've seen a lot of people with a tech background, capabilities, talents coming from India. So I would, um, I would definitely look at the, I would take the Indian market very seriously and, um, and I would definitely would encourage everyone to look at the, what is happening inside the Indian market. So. Hey, if there are startups who want to kind of reach out to you, where, where is the best uh, place to reach out to you? What's... Yeah, the best way to reach out to me is uh, my LinkedIn. You can just include it somewhere and, uh, or my email uh, so that everyone can come in and just uh, text me or message me. I usually ask for an initial call before making introductions to anyone. And um, yeah, I'm always happy to, to learn more about new ideas. So. Hey, your advice to startups and entrepreneurs yeah keep moving forward i mean and whatever you're gonna whatever well whatever feedback you're getting out of any engine investors from a pitching or a vcs just uh get it adjust adapt and grow and just keep moving forward you know i've seen a lot of scenarios and stories from people just uh manage with a small feedback with a small adjustments manage to make a huge impact in the in the business so Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. I really appreciate you taking time being part of the podcast. You know, in, uh, a startup, an entrepreneur's journey is, is, is so challenging because, you know, they start with a dream and, you know, the dream, they, they want to build a product which kind of changes the world, you know, and, and doing that, you know, there are so many challenges, but I think the world is, is getting so much better, you know, because there are people such as yourself, the investor community, everybody is kind of coming in because they understand that, you know, supporting uh, these entrepreneurs you know and creating innovations which can impact the world and change the, the world for better is the best way of creating a, a, a better world so i'm excited that you know right uh, uh, that this ecosystem is growing and now you you are not just restricted by geographies you can reach out to everyone from any part of the world and, and ask for help or just reach out and say okay, okay this is my problem or how, how do i solve it so thank you for being that person really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast as well to my listeners if you like what you see in here then please press the subscribe button until next time see you guys goodbye thank you thank you so much appreciate your time you have a lovely day